Welcome to episode 18 of Military Veterans Podcast, where we talk to veterans to learn about their stories and experiences. And today, we're joined by Tom Shea. Hey, Tom. Hey, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. No problem. Thank you so much for coming on the show. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited. I'm really honored to have you on the show here. Um, but how is your day going? Uh, you know, I'm a little ahead in time or maybe behind in time, whatever reference you have. And I live in South Carolina in the United States. And uh, it's it's a beautiful day. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, I'm, I suppose I am ahead of you in time being over here in the UK. Uh, but we've actually got a sunny day too. So, you know, maybe the stars are aligning, let's say. <laughs> it's, it's the one day of the year it doesn't rain in England. <laughs> that's it. That's it. I think we're, we're yeah. lucky today. We're lucky today. Uh, but as I said, thank you so much for coming on the show. Sure. And as I uh, mentioned, this is the 18th episode. So we're, we're, we're slowly counting up those numbers, getting there. And uh, as previous episodes, we do have the four questions uh, as a kind of like snippet of what we're going to go into in more detail. So a few, Tom, what I'll do is I'll give you them one at a time uh, and then you can bullet point answer them and then we'll dive into the uh, main episode. How does that sound? Ready. Let's do it. Excellent. Excellent. So the first question is, uh, when did you join? I came in this in the Navy in 1988. In 1988. Okay. Okay. Um, and the second question was, what service and branch? And you did mention the Navy there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was in the, I was in the Navy and uh, I was in the SEAL teams the entire time. Awesome. Awesome. I'm kind of really excited to hear about that. <laughs> um, and the third question is, how long did you serve for? I, I retired after 23 years. 23 years, long service. And last but not least, what rank did you get to? Uh, it probably different than the UK, but I retired as a senior chief petty officer. Okay. Okay. And then for the Americans listening, uh, what, what, uh, pay grade thing is that? Uh, E8. Uh, so it's the final rank would have been E9 or Sergeant Major or Master Chief, however, whatever service you're from. Okay. Okay. Definitely a difference there between the UK and the US, yep. but all good. All good. All right, Tom. Well, um, how about we jump all the way back to the beginning and ask, where was you born and where did you grow up? I grew up in a small town in central or it's a, in Indiana, which is a state in the United States. It's a little town called Brookville and it was about a mile long. And uh, uh, it was the greatest place in the world to grow up because I had no rules. I could go outside, I could carry a gun, I could hunt. And nice. it was the, the best time in the world to grow up. That's cool. And and how was your childhood? Was it uh, quite an outdoorsy childhood? I yes, I, I had a fur tra a fur trapping line when I was nine years old, and uh, I was outside most of the time. And I played sport. And uh, I don't remember the the desire to ever be inside. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, sport there was there a particular sport, or are you kind of one that enjoys most? I was, uh, I played football and I was on the wrestling team and I was also on the track team. So I actually really liked running and, but I liked wrestling because it was aggressive. It was a way for me to be aggressive and not get in trouble. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. I think I did karate as a, as a youngster. So, uh, yeah, trying to get rid of that yep. aggression that you build up. Um, and so how was, uh, how was schooling for you? Was it something that you enjoyed or? I no, I still do not enjoy it. I, I actually ended up getting a, a secondary degree in college, and I don't think I enjoyed any of it. It was just not something that was uh, uh, something I was good. I was good at. I struggled the whole time. Okay, sound very similar to me. I'm not a very academic kind of person. I like to get my hands on things to to understand how it works. So uh, absolutely, sounds like we got a got a similarity there. And um, so after, after school, um, did you have an inkling to join the military straight away? I mean, was your, was your family in the military? My dad was a West Point grad, and I grew up uh, from all of my relatives that I can ever remember meeting and back through the time in the 1700s when we actually kicked you guys out. Uh, <laughs> my family has been here and served in the military. 
So I, I, I have always wanted to be in. And from the youngest of ages that I can recall, I've always wanted to be a SEAL. Oh, really? Yeah. So what? what? Yeah, from three. Like I, my first memories were uh, meeting somebody who had been uh, on in World War II had been a SEAL. And uh, I, I recall all the memories, the memories very vividly. Wow. Wow. That's incredible. So even from that young age, you, you kind of knew that you were going to have that as a career. That's pretty impressive. I don't know if I thought I was going to be able to make it. I just really uh, looked up to the, the men that I had met. Okay. Okay. And, and so what was your kind of like, I don't know, maybe point in life that you thought, you know what, I am going to do this now. Um, and I'm, I'm not enjoying school, let's say. Uh, so what was your first stage in, in applying for the military? I, I had flunked out of West Point. So I flunked right. out and that was my point where I really realized that I wanted to be a SEAL more than anything. And it really couldn't get any worse. And, you know, starting over is where you can really start over. And I'd hit bottom by flunking out. And I knew, I thought academics weren't going to be the, the, the way forward. And uh, so I made the decision at the bottom is I wanted to be a SEAL and I wasn't, wasn't going to turn around until that happened. Okay. So, so going back, you, you actually applied for, for West Point because as far as I'm aware, uh, that's like officer, um, officer school. Yep. Is that right? Yeah, it, it would have been in the army and I, I had made it through three years. I'd been there three years and I played football and in my, at the end of my third year, I flunked out of English, uh, because I wasn't a good writer. I'm probably still not a good writer. It's, uh, just different now. And, uh, it, it, it had a really hard time. And so from really those hard times, you as a man or you as a woman have to decide what's the next step. And my next step was to go back and become the person that I've always wanted to be. Okay. So it's kind of like you had your, your calling uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> from that. And so what does that look like? If you, if you, I, I know you said flunked, but you probably did so much more than whatever I could. Um, but going from West Point over to the SEAL team, how, how does that look? Is it is it kind of you have to put your hand up again to, to join the Navy or how does it look? Uh, well, it, what it really looked like was going home to my parents and and uh, sitting there trying to figure out what would be next. And what was next is my, my parents had said, you're going to complete college. So in the process of completing college or university, I then decided – that I was going to be a SEAL. So I did complete school. And then immediately upon completion, I went and signed up for the SEAL teams. And yes, I had to raise my hand again and go back through a boot camp and start over, but it was well worth it. Oh, okay. Okay. Did you find uh, from your three years at West Point that that helped you kind of get off the ground when you went and joined the SEALs team? Uh, I think it, uh, I don't know if it was very helpful. It was, it's hard doing something the second time. Okay. And, uh, so I had to be more patient with myself than I had when I had gone into West Point and, uh, the, the SEAL program is so demonstrably hard that, uh, nothing can quite prepare you for that. Right. Right. And where, whereabouts is that? And is that called BUDS? Is that correct? Or is it something yeah. prior to Yeah. BUDS that? training is a... That's the initial training. It's at about six months long and it's in uh, California, in Southern California and uh, a great place to visit, but it's a very hard place to graduate. Yeah, I bet. I, I, I do believe it has a very low uh, pass rate, right? Yeah, it's about as low as the SBS. It's about 11 to 12% of the people who start graduate. And I think the last time I checked, which was years ago, that was the same terrible graduation rate that the special boat service had. Yeah. And, and for anybody not knowing special boat service is uh, a UK special force unit, um, which I guess is a sister unit to the SAS, the special air yep. service. So, um, yeah. Uh, was there any time during your actual training that you, you were worried or did you kind of just have that strong mindset throughout to, to, you know, make it? I think I retired worried. I think I was worried for 23 years uh, okay. and uh, I just wasn't going to quit. So I don't think I had a great positive attitude where I was, you know, strong the whole time mentally. I just, uh, I wasn't going to quit on myself. And that has been the, the, the kind of the crucible of 
being successful is even though you want to quit, just don't take the actions necessary to quit. Got it. Got it. And so um, you, you complete BUDS, uh, SEAL training. Is that correct? You complete BUDS and then that's it? Or do you have to do another kind of course beyond the six months there? Uh, no, there's just continuous courses. That's the first of many. So right after you graduate from that course, you have another six month long course, which is tactical training. Ah, right. And then you get picked up and go to a team. And on that team, you have a, a year long training uh, and then you go on deployment and that's the cycle for the rest of your life. Got New it. training ever for that lasts a year and then you go on a deployment somewhere in the world and then you come back and go through new training again and then you go on deployment. Right, right. Yeah, so like you say, continuous cycle. Um, always. Always. And so is, is that what it's called? You you go to a team because um, like in the, in the British Army, you go to your first unit. Um, I know that like US Air Force, you, you go to your first attachment. Is that what it's called in the, in the SEALs? Uh, it's your first team? Yeah, the, the, in, the, in the SEALs, it's called teams. And so there's, I think there are nine teams and uh, you, get per, you get picked up on one, on one of the, the lesser value teams first. And then if you want to go to a special unit above that, uh, like SEAL Team 6 or SDVs, you can go there. And then there's some other special units that are kind of broken off of that, that you have the option to go to once you have some seniority. I got it. Okay. Okay. So in your first, uh, maybe first year with being at the first team that you're, you're, you're assigned to, um, is that straightaway deployment or any, any stories you can share from that? Uh, yeah, the, f I, interestingly enough, I was a young kid then. Well, I thought young. I was probably 22 or three at the time. And uh, w that was well before uh, the Iraq wars and, 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 you know, Afghanistan, which seemed to be 20 years now. Uh, but we were, uh, I was attached to SEAL Team 2 and our venue was over in Europe. And uh, I got to work a lot with the, uh, the guys out of pool, the SBS uh, units that are out of pool in England. Okay. And uh, which was a, a great time to, to, as a young kid, go over and, and, uh, and uh, at that time, I think the SBS were better than we were because they had just come from working in Northern Ireland, Ireland, whether you agree with it or not, it was real for them. And they were teaching us all the skills that they had learned over the course of uh, their combat experience. Yeah. I, and I, and I've interviewed a few people that have been to Northern Ireland, um, within the army and mm -hmm. yeah, they agree, you know, it was a war. It, it wasn't the troubles as they called it. Um, so yeah, y you know, y'all could call it troubles, but it was, it was war when bullets definitely. start flying and people die. That's war. Definitely. Definitely. Yep. So you came over to, to England. Uh, was that the first time you'd been over to the UK? First time. Yeah. And I think the last, uh, I was there, uh, for about a year and I have not been back since gosh, 98, maybe 98. Okay. Okay. Um, well, it's worth coming back because, you know, we've, uh, we're have we out of the EU now, so uh, we're a bit more free. <laughs> Do you all have running water yet? I'm, I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> uh, Scotland's different. I'm joking, Scots. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we've got electricity, so that's what this lighting's about. Uh, well, hey, the, you, there's small improvements to be made, for go. sure. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, you were down there, and um, I mean, the, the, the team, the SBS teams that, that uh, had you guys over... Is there anything you can like, is there a standout moment that you thought, wow, these guys are great. And as you mentioned, you did agree that they, they were better than you back then. Maybe still are. I don't know. That's maybe a debate. Um, but was there a standout moment that you thought this is, this is pretty cool. I've learned something here. Yeah. They, so, uh, we complained more than y'all did and it was remarkable to go through and, you know, in various places in UK, it rains all the time and it's cold and that, that's where we found ourselves operating with the, the guys from pool. And uh, uh, their, their attitude was so demonstrably uh, better than ours that they were always upbeat. And what I mean by upbeat, they would joke about everything. And that, that's a great advantage to have. And their skill set was so precise, like their ability to do the jobs, to shoot and to, and to navigate and to deal with the, the conditions that we're in. 
uh, was really impressive. And it's still today, I think uh, th- there's certain things that the SBS do that the teams are not as, as good as doing. That's cool. Uh, did they ever take you to South Wales, Brecon, and took you over the Penny Fan or anything like that? Gosh, I can't remember the locations. Uh, I'd have to go back and look, but I don't know the names very well anymore. But they took you up some big hills, did they? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of big hills, which was okay with us because athletically, uh, you, you can always be at the top of your game, but the SEALs and the SBS guys were uh, probably equal athletically or physically. It's just their attitude and their their precision and skill set was remarkable. Yeah. And and a lot of that is well, from the SEALs to the SBS and beyond this mental mental state, isn't it? It's uh yep. having a strong mental mind and and stamina. Yeah, the great going. I mean, I really I the, I really learned more about how to to joke around and, and not let the bad situations you know, bog you down from my time with the, the, the units that are from, that were at the SBS sites. That's cool. And so when you finished there, did you go straight back to, to the U S and, uh, and mm-hmm. settle back in, back in the U S? Yeah. And it's, it's, a, it's usually about a year long cycle or maybe eight months long. And then you come back. And so I, I picked up another platoon and we went uh, to, uh, when the air war kicked off in Kosovo, we were the first unit to go and rescue the U.S. ambassador, a guy named Christopher Christopher Hill. And oddly, we linked up with two SBS guys that I had known uh, from maybe 18 months prior. And uh, we helped them with their ambassador rescue. And uh, they helped us with ours. Okay. So, yeah, across uh, even now when we work side by side with uh, the U.S. and the U.K., uh, you know, it's a great, it's a great um yeah, family, I guess. Uh, yeah. But but with that, um, did you? I mean, did you stay in the U.S. for the rest of your career, or did you actually get posted somewhere? I know you go away and do like uh, tours that we would call it, um, mm-hmm. maybe maybe tasks. But do you actually do you actually get posted somewhere? I was lucky in that I just stayed in the United States as a post my entire twenty three years. And I did a lot of uh, deployments uh, throughout the world. Got it, got it. And um, so from from there, did a uh, question on that though? Did you start your SEAL career as an officer straight off, or did you? Start- oh no, I was not an officer at all. I was uh, I was enlisted. Oh, you was enlisted. So since I didn't, I, I even though I graduated, I didn't petition to be an officer because the the SEALs teams in the '90s were they had too many officers. So I, I actually had tried and it was about a two year wait because there were too many. Okay. And so I'm like, I'm not waiting for two years. So then I went across the street to the enlisted uh, recruiter and signed up that way. 